It's the Titanic analogy. In other words, when you're on the Titanic and then it's the iceberg, it's all over. What you want to make sure is that you're not on the Titanic or to have some protection ahead of time because it's going to be very difficult. People can buy stuff very cheap right now with the upside being spectacular. Once everything starts to change, it's human nature. People will not want to pay up. So now they can get stuff, gold and silver, bargain basement, cheap prices. And now's the time to be paying attention when the average person, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind and not paying any attention. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. Today we have a returning guest, Bill Murphy, co-founder of GATA.org, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, as well as founder of LeMetropoleCafe.com, commentator and well-known expert on gold market dynamics. Bill's back here with us on Reluctant Preppers to talk about the implications of gold and silver precious metals in the market and what it means for the individual homeowner and head of family who's trying to protect his family from unreasonable risks. Welcome back to Reluctant Preppers, Bill. Great to be back. Thanks for having me. It's been the better part of a year since we had you here on Reluctant Preppers. And one of the things, again, I'm recalling is from a statement that you made at the first Liberty Mastermind Symposium where you were asking, I believe it was David Morgan, on uh, how did we get it so wrong of thinking that the uh, spike that we had a couple years ago in precious metals prices was the start of a big wave that we expected to continue. And uh, if you could help folks understand, especially people who we became aware at that time of the importance of precious metals as real money and as a way of reducing risk for their families, and maybe they even took a position of obtaining for the first time uh, some precious metals to help reduce their family's risk and exposure to loss of savings and that sort of thing. If you could um, circle back with us now and say, for those people who did that step, was that the wrong move to make at that time? Or was it the beginning of something bigger to come? And what's been, in your view, holding down the price of precious metals since then? Well, it's a very good question because the answer is yes, everyone's made a long move from back then in the sense of what silver has done. But, you know, that's today's news. And the, the gold cartel, as I call them, decided, uh, you know, three and a half to four years ago to take gold and silver down and keep them under the most intense pressure while we're having all this quantitative easing or printing money, you know, in Europe now and the United States, Japan. And they went in overdrive to take this thing down, silver from basically 50 to 15. And and uh, they've taken, you know, gold into the tank, and they've done it for that reason, to deflect from what's really going on in, in the sense of this money printing, as I just mentioned. And uh, it's been very, very painful. And But at some point here, they're going to hit the wall with what they're going to be able to do. And it's liable to be very violent on the upside, especially in the silver market. I mean, I you know, Dave Morgan knows much about silver as anybody in the world. And, None of us have been able to understand where they got the silver to do this, but they did. I have my own theories, but they're just theories and no sense going into them now. But basically, J.P. Morgan and their allies have been able to just to bury the silver price. And if we're correct, they're going, gradually going through all the stash that they accumulated uh, to meet demand. And when they lose control, it's going to go berserk. And $50 will be low when that happens. I know I'm a really big Eric Sprott fan of Sprott Asset Management one of the smartest men in Canada, and he believes that the price is going to go over, well over 100. So people that, and I believe that to be the case uh, uh, as much as anything I've ever thought of about a market. So anybody who's made a, who bought silver, well, short term, they may be in the weeds here, it's going to be something spectacular on the upside. And when things start to blow up in other areas, uh, they're going to be doing quite well and will have that mental and financial comfort. And as you look at ongoing factors that are happening in the precious metals market, could you uh, walk us through what you see to be the main drivers and evidence that things are in fact being suppressed? And uh, then later on, I'll, we'll circle back and ask you more about when people look around and see in the economy 
what appears to be vibrant activity or, or signs of life in the economy, why things are, might not always be what they seem to be? Well, the first thing you notice in gold and silver is how they trade. And it's, it, this is like talking about a murder trail. I mean, it's very hard to, when, when you've got a hundred things to bring to people's attention, it's very hard to do it in a short period of time. And at the end of the presentation, you'd say, you know, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I mean, it's the way it trades. I mean, you know, gold goes down most every day at 3 a.m. Uh, uh, New York time and when the London traders go to work. Uh, the market, this follow through is never allowed. Excitement is never allowed to hold. Uh, excitement is constantly crushed. Uh, they always take it down around the you know first uh, notice day or an option expirations when when the shorts to, to be protected. Uh, and it, this it's the constant lousy market action over and over again that adds up because you see this the same drill time and time again and. And of course, it's not just all them. They're able to set certain patterns in motion, and other traders see what they're doing and jump on board. So, the, and when you add it all up, if the price of gold had just just kept pace with inflation, it would be at least double what it is today. You're more than double. That's how egregious this has been. And you think of silver. Uh, was it fifty dollars for whatever reason? You know what? Uh, 35 years ago, uh, and here we are back at 15 again, and uh, or 16, and it's they're just way they're artificially way undervalued. They've been pounded down here by what we call the gold cartel, uh, going into action, concerted action to keep the prices down here to defray from what they're doing. Think of gold as a thermometer or barometer of U.S. financial market health, whether I like it or not, that's how people look at gold. Every time it goes way up, it's something negative for the power, for the money and power. Uh, it's about a, it's a crisis of some sort, bad for the dollar, too much inflation. It's always a negative. That's how it's perceived. Perceived. So now, with all what they've done, they've got the, the price of gold and silver in a tank, and everything is pretty much copacetic from what they present to the world. And they get whatever they want because there is no free press. I mean, God is not allowed to be mentioned, basically. We, we go to reporters and present things, and they tell us they're not allowed to mention us. They can't ask questions to central banks. They'd be fired. Uh, this is everywhere we turn. So it's, it's what they're doing, all this money and power, is working. And it will until it blows up. And when it blows up, it will be violent. And that's where we go back to what you're talking about in terms of protection for people to have some gold and silver and interest in the sector, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Want it to be financially good, but it'll make people aware of when this thing is blowing up, and they'll know how to they'll know how to deal with it in a much better way. So, on that note, of people who are considering making um, preparedness of their concern for their families, you mentioned precious metals being a sort of an inverse indicator of confidence in the economy. As they go up, it means people's confidence in the economy going down. What are some ways that you see artificial confidence uh, attempted to be built in the economy? You mentioned specifically the suppression, the active suppression of precious metals prices as a way of deflecting attention from them. Do you see other evidence of illegitimate ways of trying to pump up confidence in the economy that versus what's actually happening? Well, from our camp standpoint, we talk about the plunge protection team from times to the props up our stock market, the counterparty risk management group that is aligned with our government to be there to stabilize the market. Uh, every time you get a sharp dip, it goes back up, and you get a strong stock market, and it, it builds confidence in other uh, in what's going on, and that's what they want to do, to, especially for the consumer and so on, to make them feel better, to spend better, and to keep the economy going. So it's it's you have to almost watch it on a day-to-day -day basis to see what they're doing, and they keep on doing it. At the same time. There are many a number in our camp that feel our stock market's about as overvalued as it's ever been in history, and there's different measurements that they uh, make, you know, to uh, come up with that conclusion. But it would appear, you know, you could be making a massive top in our markets, and as I mentioned, gold and silver are about as undervalued as they've ever been in history relative to what's gone on. So by paying attention now and getting on board by buying some gold and silver, uh, or even in, you know buying some of the gold silver shares, uh, 
it's going to be a spectacular situation. And because of what what I call the, the gold cartel and what they have done, many people are giving up on this because it's 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 been quite a long time now. And uh, but when it turns, that's the one thing I'd say. It's going to be violent. And then turning the attention to individual uh, homeowners and families. I mean, what would be uh, again, we underscore here that this is not a financial advice channel and we don't give personalized financial advice, but what considerations for individual family risk reduction would you do you talk about uh, with friends that they should consider uh, actions that they should take if they're wanting to reduce their exposure to the vulnerability in our economy and our dollar? Well, again, I'm not I'm no financial advisor either. I can just say, if you know, out of sight, out of mind, having exposure to gold and silver because uh, it's the inverse of, of what's going on now in the market, and you can buy them so cheap, uh, it, it will give people some comfort that if if all heck breaks loose, that they're going to have some some coverage in that, and um, it's like an insurance policy. You hope it doesn't happen, but if it does, and it will, uh, they'll have their you know protection for their family and welfare and so on. And, and I'm sure everyone in our camp believes that way, and I certainly do. And, and, uh, and all I can say is it's likely to come out of nowhere and be spectacular. So it's, it's worth paying attention to. So what kind of things should people pay attention to and where can they, as you said uh, recently, uh, they cannot rely on traditional mainstream um, media sources to get their heads up that, okay, things are changing, things are about to go bad or whatever. What sources can people turn to and what uh, kinds of factors should they be watching for that would indicate to them that, that a major shift is coming? Well, you know, there's a lot of people that they can access on the Internet that talk about the gold and silver markets that are, you know, you know very good people. I have my own publication. People can sign up for a two-week free trial at the Metropole Cafe. Uh, they can go to gata.org to get information from my colleague Chris Powell. That's a free service. Um, it's, it's, I, and that's a good point. It's, it's just to become aware of what else is going on that you won't get from the traditional uh, mainstream sources. Because by the time that the what we think is going on really services there, I know it's it's the cat will be out of the bag, as they say. A question we've asked other guests in the past, and it's been uh, appreciated by our viewers, is for an individual family, how much gold or silver uh, should they consider uh, taking into their possession, and why would that range be appropriate for a family? Well, again, it all goes back to the same thing, protection. You know, I'm prejudiced in terms of being, you know, way overweighted in, in gold, silver, or the shares, but, you know, the traditional thing that people talk about is to have 5 to 10 percent exposure. You'll hear that from, you know, a lot of money management people. Again, it's like the insurance policy you don't want to collect on, but it gives you protection against other things, you know, blowing up and being able to uh, not get buried too much. Do you have a personal opinion about the ratio of gold to silver? The, the, if you could start from the discussion of what you see on gold to silver valuations in the marketplace versus historical and what you uh, would consider people holding in terms of a ratio of gold versus silver from an insurance risk reduction standpoint. Well, back in in days past, you had a 16 to one, you know, gold to silver ratio. It's gone up in the 60s and in the in the 70s. Uh, it, silver is by far, you know, the most explosive of the two. It's a smaller market. Uh, we don't know where they have got the silver, the physical silver, to keep the price down here. So when this thing blows, that's why silver will be should be anyway the huge winner because. When J.P. Morgan and their allies lose control of this scheme, which we can see them operate, you know, all the time. I mean, this past week, I think silver is just going straight down more than a dollar. Uh, that's where the, the the real spectacular returns will be made. Just thinking, if there's anything um, new or different that you've come across in the past few months, uh, so it's been been about a half a year since we had a chance to talk to you. If there's been any new revelations in any of the research that you've done or any new threads of uh, activity or evidence that you're seeing that are different from what you've seen in the past or has it been primarily a continuation and, and you know increase of the of what you've seen before it's a great question I think it's groundhog day 
that's what is so tiresome about this. It's the same drills over and over again. Um, if anything, I mean, the silver fundamentals are a little more, more cloudy to, to, to really get, but you, nothing has worked on the bullish side for gold or silver. I mean, with all this Chinese demand and other central banks buying, and they just keep going through their stash, central bank uh, gold, to meet this demand. And yet at some point they're going to hit the wall. And that's the thing. It'll be Groundhog Day till all of a sudden everything has changed. And that's, I think, what I'd like to stress the most to end this is that it's, it's like the, it's the Titanic analogy. In other words, when you're on the Titanic and then it's the iceberg, it's all over. What you want to make sure is that you're not on the Titanic or it has some protection ahead of time because it's going to be very difficult. People can buy stuff very cheap right now with the upside being spectacular. Once everything starts to change, it, it's human nature. People will not want to pay up. So now they can get stuff, gold and silver, bargain basement, cheap prices. And now's the time to be paying attention when the average person, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind, and not paying any attention. Well, before we let you go, Bill, do you have any uh, further words of uh, advice or wisdom that where people can um, uh, get further information? You've mentioned Gata.org and Le Metropole Cafe. Any other uh, thoughts before we let you go? Well, again, there's, you know, there's some, a, a number of good people that put stuff out on the, on the gold and silver market. My bet, of course, is, is on the manipulation issue because it's, it's, it's why people should stay in the game. We know how undervalued it is because of what they have done. We've been following, doing this since 1998. And this is in gold. Silver was below $4 back then and gold about two seventy five. dollars And after what's all occurred, you know, with this QE and stuff like that, gold and silver today are about as cheap as they were back then. So it's, that's the opportunity that people have today that they just don't see. And, and uh, uh, everybody will have a different way of looking at this. And they, some people may, it may even be bearish here. But so it's hard for me to, to go to specific other people other than what, what we do. But uh, I think you're going to see gold explode and uh, you're going to see silver well over $100 an ounce, and now's the time to be looking at it. Well, Bill Murphy of Gata.org and LaMetropoleCafe.com, thank you again for joining us again here on Reluctant Preppers and sharing your insights with our audience. We'd like to have you back another time. Now, hopefully, it'll be next time we, we, we get together, things will have already kicked into high gear. You'll be telling us, I told you so. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Take care.